guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. Today I want to talk about dial indicators and cleaning them. Now what I'm going to do here, I do not suggest doing. I'm going to still do it just for some of those people that are out there that are curious. And the reason I don't want you to do this yourself is I don't want to get in trouble and I also don't want a bunch of negative comments saying what I'm doing is stupid. But at the same time, my goal is to clean one of these gauges and save it without damaging it. And that's the real key that I'm talking about is without damaging it. Now what will happen to an old gauge like this? I've got three of them. These, this is a set of Ames gauges and they are beautiful, accurate to ten thousandths of an inch. You saw this large one in another video and I talked about getting it cleaned up because, well, it's just sticky as you can see and the back of it is a mess. These other two are fine, they work okay, but this one here needs some work. What I'm gonna do with it is clean it with mineral spirits or other people would call it paint thinner. Paint thinner is one of my favorite ways of cleaning gunk off of anything that has oil in it. And this gauge here, all this brown stuff here, the reddish brown, that's all just caked on oil. That'll come off with paint thinner. But also what happens, if you've got this caked with some sort of foobaz, and foobaz is a technical term we used to use in photography, and it meant garbage on your negative, we used to just call it foobaz, is it'll get on the different moving parts here and just gum it up. And what paint thinner will also do for you is it kind of reactivates the original oils that are in here and they're a very delicate oil and I don't suggest oiling this. If I can't get this up and running to where it satisfies me, I'll end up sending it in only because it is such an excellent and very rare tool that it would be a shame not to bring it back to operating condition. Now to give you an idea, this little test master, accurate to ten thousandths of an inch. I picked it up on eBay a while back, didn't pay much for it. I think I paid five dollars for it or something like that. But when I got it, the needle didn't move at all. And all I did to clean it was, I literally just took a spray bottle with, with paint thinner on it, or in it, and just sprayed it in certain areas and wiped it down and brought it back to operating condition in just a few minutes. And we're going to do the same thing with this Ames gauge. Have some tools here. I've got some different types of swabs. I have a screwdriver to take the back off if I feel I need it. And I am just going to soak it down with paint thinner. Now, I've already tested the materials. I got some paint thinner on a swab, tested it to make sure nothing was going to get damaged. Paint thinner doesn't normally damage anything, um, won't melt plastic normally, but what it can do is discolor it. So I'm just going to take a couple of the key areas where I've got movement. And spray it down and just wipe it, those particular areas, and just see what happens. Paint thinner, to my knowledge, for me, has never damaged it. doesn't mean it won't damage it. All it means is, so far, it hasn't damaged it for me. <laughs> See? Just that little bit right there. Made it work so much better. And this is when you have to know when to stop. I was going to take the whole back of this off and also clean it that way. But it works so smooth right there, just cleaning those two surfaces that I think I'm going to call it pretty much done. Actually, I'm going to do some more detailed work here, um, cleaning around the bezel, clean up some of the grease and grime back here, and let's see how good I can actually get it to look.
There it is, cleaned up, ready for service. Boy, that works nice now. I know I fed some trolls on that one. I'm going to get some <laughs> really interesting comments. Like I said, this is not something that I say you should ever do to a dial indicator. But if you have an old beat up dial indicator that's not working, to me it's worth taking the risk. The first time I did this was probably about three years ago and it was to a, well let me grab it. So here's the first one I ever did. This is a last word indicator. As you can see, it's gone through a couple battles in its life and it absolutely didn't move at all. Cleaned it up just like I did this gauge. Three years later, it's still working fine. So again, if you've got an old beat up gauge that isn't working, it's well worth the test to just spray some WD-40 on it. I actually got a little too, or not WD-40, but paint thinner and um, got some in underneath the bezel. I had to take that off and clean it up, which isn't that big a deal. There's just a little retaining ring back here that you take off. The thing you have to be very careful about when you do that is the numbers inside, you know, they rotate. You have to be careful because you, you can damage that needle when you take that off, so just be very cautious. Now I also use some incredible purple on this, or whatever they call it, industrial purple from Zap. The paint thinner just wasn't digging into this fast enough, so I went to that incredible purple and sprayed it down and cleaned it. But boy, it really works nice now. Before, still a little sticky, but upside down, a lot of gauges have a hard time. And this one here is particularly useful in that it has very subtle pressure. It's probably the most subtle that I have of any gauge. And when you're talking in ten thousandths, that could be the difference between an accurate or an inaccurate reading. All right, guys, leave me your positive comments and your thumbs up if you like this video. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.